this is Justin Prince. Man, thank you for joining me in this online discussion. Now, this is the MLM versus social retail. This is for those of you who are network marketing professionals, direct sales professionals, you've been around the game and you maybe have thought similar to what I thought, which is there's gotta be a better way to do this whole thing. And so we're gonna discuss the difference in the business models in this discussion today. Now, to start this, I wanna start with you with my story, because I think it leads nicely into what we're doing with Modair, what we're doing with social retail. My wife and I have four young kids. You know, I'm a daddy first, I'm a husband first for sure. I was introduced to our profession when I was 25 years old. And at the time, I was kind of skeptical about it. You know, once I got over my skepticism, I said, I'm gonna go all in on this thing. Uh, I went for it and I became the number three earner, the national spokesperson for this, this uh, nutrition company. And I was like, man, I'm the man at this. And then I, the company went out of business. I'm like, I'm not the man anymore. Some of you guys have ever had this happen. It's just like the worst feeling ever. I had no college education. I had really no professional background. I was making pizzas and working at a mall kiosk prior to this whole thing. And so when that happened, I had uh, different company owners and you know, top earners calling me. I was like, who are all these people? And I ended up joining another company. And I was looking for good mentoring at the time. I joined this company. I thought it would take me two months to get full time. Took me two years. And at one point I moved my pregnant wife and our two babies into the loft of my wife's parents' garage. I'm living, living there, I'm 27 years old. I'm a grown man living in the United States of America. And I'm like, what am I doing with my life? You know, I'm like chasing this like MLM dream, you know? I share that story with you to say this. I ultimately became the fastest growing distributor we had anywhere in the world with that company. Traveled all over the world. I was speaking in Moscow and Umsk, Russia and Amade, Kazakhstan when I was 29. Had this crazy cool experience. But I got to a place where I lost my belief in our profession. I'm just gonna be totally like, just laid on the line with you. It wasn't about that company, it was about the business model of network marketing. I got to a place where I thought, I thought it was inherently unstable. Have you ever met those people that are like, look, my first company had 10,000 people on my team, my second company had 20,000, my third company, 30,000, this is the one I waited for my whole life. And I'm thinking, where's the first 10,000 people? You know, like what happened? And what happened was the model failed them. And some of you guys have had this happen. Like you start wondering like, what's wrong with me? And like, it's almost like we build it up and then it starts to go down. You're like, what's going on? So I ended up selling that business. I wasn't gonna go around the world, go around the country telling people, hey, you can do this or you should do this. This is a good business. If I felt like the business model was fundamentally flawed. And so when I sold that business, I got out for the next two years, I was doing private equity consulting. And then I was introduced to the project that we, that turned into what you're gonna see today, the Modair, the social retail. As a consultant, I came into a company that was 25 years old as a consultant to help them transform this company. So when we talk about the model, let's talk about the business model for a minute. When we talk about the model, I wanna talk about the old model, because when you see this, you'll be like, oh, this is what we all do. So first thing is the network marketing business model, it's been this way for 100 years, is what's called a self-consumption or internal consumption model. What does that mean? It means that you sign up in the company as a promoter, you know, brand partner, associate, distributor, whatever the company calls you, representative. And then you go out there and you start getting other people to join the company. They typically have like a wholesale price and they join and they get a discount on the products. And you receive an override commission on all of the consumption, the self-consumption or the internal consumption of that network of people. Now look, I have no problem with you using the products. I think you should consume the products, that's cool. I have no problem with you recruiting other people, great. What's the problem? Is that there's no end consumers or very little end consumers. In other words, they're all kind of like us, You know, they're all part of the thing. So that model, that self-consumption model, what happens is it rolls out like an accordion. Like if the company's like got some momentum and some mojo, you guys have seen this happen. You see a company spike, it's going well. Then what happens when the momentum slows or it softens? What happens is the person at the bottom, the person that joined last night, if they can't go recruit more people, they can't make money. And if they can't make money, you, you already know what happens. It starts to erode from the bottom up. It's like the accordion starts coming back. And when this happens, you can't do enough three-way calls. Have you ever had that happen? It's just like, what the heck's going on with my team right now, you know? Can't do enough conference calls, can't do enough three-way calls. So when it erodes, the little guy's not making enough money, now they quit, the person above them who's a small rank, they're now not making enough money, they're unqualified, now they quit, and our networks start to erode like this. And this was part of what I felt like was broken with our model. The second thing is this, people ask me sometimes, they'll say, what's the difference between Modair and other companies? And one of the things of the old model is, think of a company in your brain, you can pick whatever one you want, www.networkmarketing.com. Pick whatever company you want. Think of the tabs on the website. The tabs are something like this, company, products, opportunity, events, charities, you know, join now, something like that. Why do they have the opportunity tabs on the website? The reason is because they're trying to get more people to join the company so they can self-consume or internal consumption of the products. Now, when you go to modair.com, you'll notice it's all retail. <laughs> you know, there's no network marketing, anything. Third is distributor pricing. Guys, can we just be honest? Like, 
for a lot of times in network marketing, if you're not listening to the doctor CDs and you're not going to the weekly meeting and you're not going to the super Saturday and you're not plugged into the system and you're not listening to the doctors or the formulators talk about the products, you wouldn't pay those prices to get access to those products. They're not retail prices. They're not prices that you get access to in the normal uh, retail world. And they're, they're prices that actually have been designed to help us build a distributor dist or a self-consumption distribution model. Next is wholesale versus retail. This is one of the fallacies of network marketing. We'll get on a whiteboard. We're like, there's eight ways to earn money in our comp plan. Way number one, you know, buy wholesale, sell retail. And then we all, unless it's like a party plan, we all look at each other like, uh, it doesn't really work that way. The reason they have this is so that you'll, you'll pay the, like the fee member. We say like, just like a Costco membership. It's like, no, it's not like a Costco membership. So you, you pay the fee so you can get the wholesale pricing. That's a fictitious fake thing that we've done in our profession to, to make it seem like there's a wholesale margin. Next is earn income primarily from recruiting. You know, uh, you can only be like a, a, a double diamond ninja backflip if you can go recruit a team of people. I remember our first year of Modair, we had a woman that earned $34,000. She had four kids. She went on a couple trips and she didn't recruit any people. And that was the real power because 70% of people that join network marketing, seven out of 10 that join your team, recruit zero people. So what happens is we churn through those people. They leave us feeling like a failure and what failed them was not them. They were willing to put in the effort. What failed them was the business model. And then lastly is recognition titles are based only from recruiting or primarily from recruiting. And what I mean by that is this, it's like, you can't become the guru, superstar, ninja, backflip, diamond, you know what I'm saying, sapphire, whatever. You can't become that unless you build this huge network of people. And in uh, that, there, there's a broken part of that, but you can't be recognized or you can't rank advance from just customer acquisition. Now, the federal government's had an issue with this. The FTC has said, and this has happened to multiple businesses. They've said, look, you guys don't have enough uh, customer consumption. Most of your revenue is actually coming from distributors. So I came into a company uh, that was a 25 year old company at the time. It's now over 30 years old. So we had a super unique opportunity because we had a company that had done over 6.7 billion in sales when I showed up. Um, it was a couple hundred million dollars a year. It was owned by one of the largest equity funds in the country. It was a $2.3 billion fund that owned Mrs. Fields Cookies, TCBY Yogurt, Chevy's Tex-Mex. We had the financial strength and backing to really turn it around, to really disrupt the industry. And we had this incredible product line that had been in, you know, had been serving markets all over the world. Yet, the company had had some issues, right? They'd been through um, an eight year double digit decline in revenue. So they like, needed to be transformed and playing it safe wasn't the idea. So we thought, okay, we had a smart group of people, some of the smartest people you'd ever meet. And we said, if we were to do something together, let's do something big. Like let's not create a better version of network marketing or a better version of MLM, like a, like a 2.0 of somebody else. Like, look, look at them. They're good. Let's copy them. No, we were like, yo, if we're going to do something together, let's disrupt the industry. If we're going to do something together, let's change the game forever. And so when I think of a different business model, what I want you to think about it is like, Henry Ford said, if I would have asked the people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Like we can only see what we've seen and think of what Netflix did to Blockbuster. What Netflix did was not create better entertainment. Now today they have original entertainment, but that wasn't the original idea. The original idea was the same entertainment, but they gave you a better business model. Instead of like getting in your car and driving to Blockbuster, yo, you just clicked a button on the couch on your underwear and you were, you were good to watch it. So we said, what if we could change the game forever? Now, six months before I'm sitting there in this boardroom, I'm sitting at lunch with a friend of mine in Provo, Utah. And the dude's dressed to the nines. Tuesday afternoon at lunch, he's got like his pocket squares in. He's got his cufflinks, matches shoelaces. I'm like, bro, where do you get all your clothes? What's wrong with you? You look like you're going to like a New York City premiere and it's, we're in Provo, man, what's wrong with you? And he said, you know, I, I shop at Nordstrom's Rack. Now I'd heard of Nordstrom's Rack before. And then he said, I shop at guilt.com. And I go, what's guilt.com? And the guy looks at me like I'm an idiot. You know, like, I, like I'm living in a under a rock, you know? Like I've never even heard of this before. And he picks up his phone at lunch, sends me a text message. In the text is a link. I click the link, it gives me $25 off guilt.com, gives him $25 for sharing. It's what's called a give, get, give benefit, get benefit. I remember getting in my car and I remember thinking it should be that easy. Like what just happened right there at lunch, building a network should, should be like what just happened right there at lunch. Because check this out. Normally in network marketing, you know how it is. You call this this awkward conversation like, hey, Billy, remember me from science class 18 years ago in high school? It's like, what? And then you give me the pitch, right? And then I join and then you send me to three super Saturdays to teach me what to say to people and then three more super Saturdays to overcome my fear and personally develop me enough to dare say it to someone. And six months from now, I recruit someone and we're like, yo, we got duplication. Like we got momentum over here in our company, right? And it's kind of this awkward conversation. What happened there at lunch with this retail give get conversation was so normal, so natural. Now, fast forward six months, I'm sitting in the boardroom of this multi hundred million dollar company. I'm the youngest guy in the room by far. And I'm sitting there and I remember 
one of the guys who's the chief branding officer. He's worked with Macy's, Gap, Chipotle, Sephora, Ray-Ban. I mean, I tell people, this guy didn't even know how to spell MLM, right? Didn't come from this world at all. He says to me, he goes, have you ever heard of guilt.com? And I look at him like, come on, bro. You think I don't know what guilt.com is, you know? Like, you think I don't, I'm not cool, you know? So I'd heard of it once in my whole life, so I felt like I was in the know. He says, they, he goes, they're six years old. He goes, do you know how many customers they have? I said, I know of two, <laughs> you know, me and my buddy. And so he said, they have six million customers. He says, do you know how much revenue, revenue they do a year? I said, I don't know, 30 million? He said, a billion per year in sales. That's when the idea hit me. I thought, what if you could combine the power of this shift that's happening in retail, which is the shift from physical to digital in social shopping, and you could combine it with the power of direct sales. If you could do that, you could create something brand new. You could create this idea called social retail. So social retail is this idea of a retail brand powered by people. This is the first social retail company in history. So when you go to modere.com and you look at this, the site, there's uh, the, t the tabs, there's no opportunity tab, why? Because my friends, 95% of the US population are non-network marketers, which means 5% of us are. Guess where all the volume lies? You know, it doesn't lie with us calling each other like, hey Randall, like does your company suck? Well, mine sucks less than yours, so come over to mine. That's not where the volume lies. The volume lies with you getting legitimate, authentic, and normal uh, uh, volume and activity from the 95% of the population. Part of what's so unique about Modera is you put a customer into Modera.com. The way that you're used to as a, as a retailer is they start talking to you. They market to you with flash sales, limited time offers, promotions, incentives, discounts. They say Father's Day offer, Mother's Day offer, time to shop, time to share. Have you ever had that happen? Modera does the same thing to your customers. So you put a, a customer into Modera.com, they start marketing to your customers, not only encouraging your customers to shop again, but they're also encouraging them to share with other customers. In fact, right now, one out of every three customers that shops at our site every month comes from the referral of a customer. So 35% of our sales come from customers referring customers. Guys, using like, like MLM terms, they're duplicating. And you're like our customers are duplicating, not just our reps, our actual customers are as well. Also, Modera has smart ship and loyalty programs that we model off of Amazon Prime. So the more that your people order, the more that your customers order, the deeper discount they get, up to 15% off their orders every month. This has continued to drive real, true retention. Our goal is not to compete with retention of MLM. MLM retention is brutal. We're trying to compete with consumer packaged goods. What this business model has led to is a 10 to one ratio of customers to social marketers, people that are actually doing the business. Think of it this way. What does that mean? 10 to one ratio. That means for every one person that does your business, you don't have one order. <laughs> For every one person that does it, you have an, a, a, an average of 10 orders because each person's averaging 10 customers. So if you build a team of 50 people, that's the potential of 500 orders. Build a team of 1,000 people, it's a potential of 10,000 orders. You build a team of 10,000 people, it's a potential of 100,000 orders that you could potentially earn a commission on because of the power of this customer model. What's also happened is 85% of our revenue comes from real retail customers. Now you've been around the space, you know how big of a deal that is. Most uh, direct sales network marketing companies, most of their revenue comes from the distributors or the associates buying the product. Over 85% of our monthly revenue comes from true customer consumption. This has led to, in our, just our first five years, uh, over 3 million new customers, over $1 billion in overall sales, over 500 million has been paid out in commissions, and this is just the beginning of where we're headed. All right, let me shift gears on you. Let me talk to you about the products. Part of what makes Modere so unique is this bedrock of products. You can have the best customer model in the world, but if people don't want to buy the products, you're in trouble, right? Now this company has sold $6.7 billion worth of product sales before we all showed up because the products really matter. The products really work. If you look at all the big networks in the world, you look at all of the billion dollar networks, they all have something in common, which is a broad product line. You know, very rarely do you see kind of a small, narrow company, small, small narrow product line uh, that becomes one of the big ones the broad product line because you can build a consumer base where maybe they don't use this product but they use that product or they don't use that product they use this. I wanna share with you our philosophy when it comes to product rollouts. Now, if you think of Apple, what do they do? When Steve Jobs launched the iPod and then the iPhone, then the iPad, what was he really getting you into? Those were hero products, right? Got you into the iPod, but what he really got you into is iTunes, iCloud, iMac. In other words, he got you into the ecosystem. With Modere, our ecosystem is this idea of clean, non-toxic products. So recyclable, BPA-free, never test on animals. We have our Perfect 10 quality standard. These are products that you can use in every area of your home. They're award-winning products with awards both in our profession, out of our profession. Now our hero products, we have stuff like the liquid collagen, the liquid biocell. So collagen is one of the most searched words on the internet. This is literally like one of the next big movements in, in health and wellness is collagen. 
So we have our liquid collagen, our liquid bile cell, which is seven international patents, 37 human clinicals. This is a product that people get into and then they get into this whole live clean philosophy. The other one is our product trim. Trim won the best weight loss supplement of the year in 2018. What's cool about this one is it won the best weight loss supplement out of all supplements. In other words, not just out of direct sales, right? Out of GNC, bodybuilding.com, everybody, this was the one. This not only has the liquid bio cell technology in it, this also has um, CLA, a clinical dose of CLA. So what that does is actually helps to build lean muscle and burn belly fat. It tastes, the, the chocolate tastes like chocolate pudding. We have a couple different flavors. If you take a spoonful a day, it's like the simplest product on the planet to market. People say, hey, what is this? You can send them your code and, and build your base from there. We also have our Logic. You know, our Logic uh, and uh, with Tetra Blend coffee as well as our, our creamer. So this has the collagen. So the thing about collagen coffee, add trim to it. You have collagen weight loss coffee. You have the MCT oils, the grass-fed butter with the creamers. The other thing that's so powerful about the product line is our sports nutrition and our Go products. So you have stuff that you can use literally on the go. You can have stuff for mental clarity, mental focus, uh, for energy, you can use in every area of your home. So the Hero products get you into this broad range of everyday essential non-toxic products that are safe, that are effective, and that are affordable. Here's the thing, my friends. You've seen the rise of Trader Joe's. You've seen the rise of Whole Foods. People want safe products. Why did, why did everyone you know already not buy safe products? There's a couple of reasons. One, they're hard to find. Two is they don't work, you know, like their hair's matted down like this, and they're like, oh my gosh, this shampoo didn't work. Or three is they're too expensive. So if you have a one-stop shop with safe, effective, and affordable products, you have what the consumer base is actually looking for, and you have it in one place. So at this point, you've got the company at the comp right time in the company's history, you've got the business model, you've got the products, you've got the compensation, you've got everything that you need to build the business that you'd like to build, and to really help us disrupt this industry, to become the ones that lead the way in the social retail revolution. So we have a values-based company. Our company, I believe that there's good volume and bad volume. You've had this happen in your teams. Like, we're looking for the right people to want to partner with, people that espouse the six values that we have as a company. Also, online systems and duplication. One of the reasons people don't want to join you in your current business or haven't wanted to join you in the past is not because they don't want the benefits of what your business can do, is they don't want to do the work that you're doing. And what I mean by that is not like something for nothing, no work. I'm saying that more like, they don't want to do the home parties and the grind themselves to death at the weekly Santa Fe hotel meeting at the local like Hilton. Like they want to like be able to meet people where they're at, which is online. We've pioneered how to create true duplication with real systems online. You can literally plug into and learn to make money on your phone. The movement now is the gig economy. The gig economy is not, we're not getting access to them in network marketing. It's because we, the old model doesn't talk to the gig worker. We can talk to that person. We pay two times per day. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we, the, people can make a sell right now, send the $10 code, and we'll pay them on both their first orders and reorders twice a day. We also have a dual-sided compensation plan. What this means is this. It means people can win by just acquiring customers and people can win by building a team. A dual-sided compensation plan helps more people to win. It helps people that have tried direct sales in the past and they weren't good at recruiting, it helps them to win here. So you have the customer side so they can build a, a customer base, they can get recognition, they can cross stage, they can feel like a million bucks just from the customer side. One of the questions I like to ask people is, hey, show me in your comp plan how I can make $1,000 a month or 10,000 a month or 100,000 a month and recruit zero people. Most networkers look at me like, what are you talking about, you know? We have people that have built incredible businesses on just the customer side. The last thing is, is pre-momentum timing. My friend, you've heard this idea like you want to get in early. It is direct sales myth. It's the biggest myth in direct sales. You want to get in early? No, you don't want to get in early, you know? What you want is to get in early on momentum. Just being early in the company's history is not what you want. You want to be in early on momentum and be one of the ones that helps to cause it and to drive it. And what I want to share with you is this. As you look at the, the pioneering that's happened in Modair, those first number of years to kind of lay the foundation, to create the online systems, to, to, to do the different acquisitions of these incredible product lines, like to put it all together, to build the system, to build the models, to do something no one's ever done before. That was not where you wanted to join. You, where you want to join is now. Here's why. Since we launched Modair in 2016, um, all of the global markets were fully transformed to Modair. North America is up 973%. Australia and New Zealand is up 101% and Europe is up 671%. What I wanna share with you is this. This is just the beginning of this inflection point of where we're headed. This is the right time. It's, it's, I, I feel like it took us six years to get to the start line. We've never been in a more unique situation 
to help this company to go truly into momentum, to drive from you know a couple hundred million dollars a year to a multi-billion dollar business. And our drive now is to that first billion. If you've been looking in your career for the right company at the right time, the right disruptive business model, the right values and culture, the right compensation, and the right systems where you can actually leverage it and help people to win regardless of their kind of their skill sets or their backgrounds, this is what people look for their whole life. I'd encourage you to get back with the person that shared this with you and have them assist you in the enrollment process. We look forward to partnering with you, answering any tough questions that you have, and we think the closer you look, the better it's gonna look. Thanks so much, talk to you soon.